advantage of that. But children trust us. And that's what God says, that we need to be children and trust in Him. Amen? Because God tells us beautiful promises in this Word. I know that a lot of us have gone through things or are going through things. But you know what? You claim what God has told you in this Word. He will turn your life around. Amen? You, you might say, well, it hasn't happened yet. Sometimes God wants us to be patient. Amen. And God will turn your life around. As I get into my uh, my sermon, my message today, I'm going to go ahead and kneel in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for today. We want to thank you for your Sabbath day. And Lord, we just ask that you uh, guide us and that your Holy Spirit be here with us. And um, that the words that I speak will come from you, Lord. Help me to present this message. Not just for everybody here, but also for myself. Lord, would you invite your Holy Spirit. And we thank you for everything. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. We should be excited. Amen. God is good. Today's message is called On a Mission. I had another sermon in mind. I had another message in mind. But the Lord said, I don't want you to speak about that. I want you to speak about this. Amen. So when God is the boss, right? Amen. God is the boss. So we are to be obedient to what he tells us to do and not what we want to do. Right? That's what's wrong with a lot of churches today is they want to present themselves like they're better than everybody. And that's not what we're here for. I'm just like you and you're just like me. Amen. We're in this together. We are to let God be the boss. We are to let God lead in everything and not what I have to say or what any pastor has to say. All right. So the title is called On a Mission. What is the what is the term fear the Lord mean to you? Have you ever heard the Bible say or have you ever heard somebody say fear the Lord? I had another sermon in mind. I had another message in mind. But the Lord said, I don't want you to speak about that. I want you to speak about this. Amen. So when God is the boss, right? Amen. God is the boss. So we are to be obedient to what he tells us to do and not what we want to do. Right? That's what's wrong with a lot of churches today is they want to present themselves like they're better than everybody. And that's not what we're here for. I'm just like you and you're just like me. Amen. We're in this together. We are to let God be the boss. We are to let God lead in everything and not what I have to say or what any pastor has to say. All right. So the title is called On a Mission. What is the what is the term fear the Lord mean to you? Have you ever heard the Bible say or have you ever heard somebody say fear the Lord? When, when the Bible talks about fearing the Lord, it talks about respecting the Lord. Because the Bible says He is Lord of Lords, King of Kings, and Lord of Lords. Amen? A lot of times we hear the word Lord, and we don't even stop and think about it, what it means. The word Lord means Sir. That's what it means. Because in Spanish we say Señor de Señores. It means Sir. So we tell people, ma'am or sir, out of what? Respect. But he says that he's Lord of Lords. That means he's sir of sirs, right? So we are to come to him in respect, in fear. Not in fear as in like, oh, I'm so scared, right? But in fear as in, you're the one in charge. I'm just, be, I'm just trying to be obedient to what you call me to do. In this, world, in this world today, in this society today, we have parents. We have the elderly, right? We have our spouse, our husband, or wife. We have a pastor. We have our boss at work. Do we show them respect? We should, right? We should. 
But so many things have changed where people don't have respect for the elderly anymore, right? I've seen it with my own eyes. We don't have respect for our, our parents. Even though we're grown up, even though we might be in our 20s, 30s, or 40s, we are still to respect our parents. Amen? We don't have respect for our spouse, our husband, or wife. You know, we'll embarrass them in front of people. We'll talk bad about them right in front of their face to other people. That doesn't feel good, right? It doesn't feel good at all. That's losing respect for your spouse, right? We don't have respect for pastors. You know that the Lord God calls men to be pastors. It's a calling. It's not easy to be a pastor. A lot of people think, well, you just go up there and preach and that's it. No. The, we, we, have a high, we have a high calling. The Lord calls us to lead His people. Amen? And if we, are, if we see that they're going astray, we are to try to bring them back together. It's not always that easy. Amen? It's not always that easy. You got to hear all the problems that everybody's going through, including your own problems at home. Right? So we are to have respect for the pastors. Amen? We are to have respect for our bosses at work. I see a lot of the younger generation at work just disrespecting their boss big time, right? No respect. And uh, they don't know how hard that person worked to, to become that, that boss at work, right? But most importantly, respect towards God, right? Most importantly, respect towards God. If we can't respect the people around us, we, how are we going to respect God, right? Do we tell God what to do for us? No. We ask God in humility, in humbleness. What does humbleness mean? A simple attitude, right? Not a high mind, not a big head. That's what we call it today. You know, man, that... That girl or that guy has a big head. <laughs> Can't walk through that door. <laughs> and sometimes even pastors get a big head. You know, I pray to God, keep me humble. Keep me humble. I don't ever want to come in thinking I know everything and that, I, and that I'm better than anybody because I'm not. Amen? I want God to re keep me humble because... God can only use a humble person. Did you know that? God can only use you if you have a humble attitude. If I have a big head, God will eventually break me down. Right? We need to be humble. So respect. We have to have respect for our parents, the elderly, a husband and wife, the pastor, your boss at work. But most importantly, respect towards God. We don't tell God what to do. We come to Him in humility and in humbleness. God will use you. God will use you. You can't even, if you, if you stop and think about it, God will use you in a mighty way. You might think, well, I don't, I'm not that educated. Well, I don't know how to read the Bible that good. It, does, it doesn't matter. Did you know that the disciples... Half of them, more than half of them, were just average people. Average people that God called them to, to follow Him. And some of them were like, I don't know if I can do it. Some of them halfway kind of ran away from God. Did you know Peter? Peter denied Jesus. You know, uh, a lot of times we say, well, I'm ready to serve you, God, and I love you, God. But when the pressure is put on you, at work or around your friends or around your family, a lot of times you, we, we kind of deny God, right? We get a little embarrassed. But you know how's another way we deny God? Is by the way we live. Amen? You know, we deny God if God has called us to live a certain way, but we want to please the friends around us, 
then we're denying God. Amen. So Peter, Peter was always saying, Jesus, I would do anything for you. I'll die for you. That's what Jesus, have you ever met somebody that's always speaking right away? Saying what is in their mind right away? Outspoken, that's the word. Somebody that's very outspoken, right? Yes, I'll do whatever you tell me to do. I'll be here at church. I'll be here 30 minutes early. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you with it, whatever it takes, right? There's people like that. That was Peter. Peter was telling Jesus, I'm going to do whatever you tell me to do. I love you more than anybody here. I love you more than the disciples. <laughs> but you know what? When, when uh, Peter saw that they were taking Jesus to be crucified, he goes, man, if, if, I'm, if that's going to happen to me eventually, if I'm going to have to go through what Jesus went through, I don't know if I can do it, right? But what was Jesus telling, or what was Peter telling Jesus before that? I'll do anything for you. I'll die for you, right? He even tried to defend Jesus by cutting one of the soldiers' uh, ear off. He was a gangster dude. <laughs> but uh, but when uh, when the people came and said, "Aren't you one of Jesus' followers?" Peter's like, no, no, I don't know who that is. Three times he was asked that question. I think the third time he even cursed and said, I don't effing know who that dude is. It's crazy. True story. I don't know who he is. I don't, I don't have nothing to do with him. He was fearing that they were going to do the same thing to him. How do we deny Jesus? We are to respect God, right? We are to follow Jesus all the way through, and he will give us the strength. Jesus tells us the kingdom of heaven is like a landlord or like a boss who hired workers. Okay? How do we make it to heaven? This is an example that Jesus tells us in the book of Matthew. We're going to go to the book of Matthew. And if you don't have a Bible with you, if you want to write down some Bible verses and look them up later, that's fine. But we're going to go to the book of Matthew chapter 20. The Word of God is powerful. Our, our service is based from the Bible. Amen? I could, tell, I could stand up here and tell you stories all day long, but I want to tell you what the Bible says. Amen? Because the Bible is still what we need in 2019. Amen? A lot of churches are getting away from this. And a lot of churches are just getting up here and entertaining you. Getting you motivated, jumping up and down, but not teaching you what the Word of God says. Amen? I'm here to teach you what the Bible says. Amen? Matthew chapter 20, verse 1. And it says, For the kingdom of heaven is like a landlord who went out early in the morning to hire laborers or workers for his vineyard. Okay? Matthew chapter 20, verse 1. So Jesus, because this is written in red, here's Jesus talking. It says, The kingdom of heaven is like a landlord that went out, went outside to go look for workers. Early in the morning, he went out there and he said, hey, would you like to work for me? He would go up to the other person, would you like to work for me? All right, I will pay you, all right? If, I mean, nobody works for free, right? <laughs> so he asked them, he went out and went and hired people. Come work in my vine yard, right? I need you to work in my vine yard. I own this vine yard. I need you to work for me. And I'm inviting you. So I'm not forcing you. I'm inviting you. Amen? It says early in the, in the morning. This is symbolically talking about from the beginning. He hires workers to work for his vineyard. Let's continue to read Matthew chapter 20, 2 to 4. Now when he had agreed 
with the laborers for a denarius a day, he went, he sent them into his vineyard, and he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, you also go into the vineyard, and whatever is right, I will give you. So they went. So he went to another area. He says, okay, I went to the east side of Amarillo. Now I'm going to go to the north side of Amarillo. I'm going to ask them if they want to work. And then he went from the north side of Amarillo to the, to the south side. And then the west side. West side? <laughs> right? So uh, this, this landlord goes and hires people. He says, you're just standing there. Well, you want to come work for me? And they're like, all right. But it's talking about later on in the day, right? So this jefe, this landlord, told the laborers he would pay them to what they agreed to. But throughout the day, he kept hiring people, some even after lunch. So remember, he was hiring people early in the morning, but he went after lunch and he went and hired more people to work that same day. And he said, I'm going to pay you. And they all agreed, right? Let's continue in Matthew 20. Verse 8 and 9. So when the evening had come, the owner of the vineyard said to his steward, Call the laborers and give them their wages, beginning with the last to the first. And when those who came were hired about the eleventh hour, they each received a denarius. A denarius is a Latin word for dinero or money. So the landlord says, he tells his servants, go call them all up. We're finished. This is the end of the day. Now everybody's going to get paid, right? From the last to the first. So he started to pay the ones that came in last, and then he started to pay the ones that came in first. Amen? Amen. You can imagine, though, the ones that had started working early in the morning at 6 a.m., they said, well, we're going to get paid more, right? And that's only fair, right? If you work full eight hours, but somebody comes in and works only four hours, some of them even came in and only worked two hours. Some of them came in and only worked one hour. So now it's time for all of them to get paid. Amen? Somebody's jumped in the gun. <laughs> All right, but before we continue the story, let's go to John chapter 15. Let's go to John chapter 15. And let's see who this landlord that is in charge is. John chapter 15. The Bible is awesome because the Bible tells us everything we, to, we need to know. I could tell you the landlord is so-and-so and so-and-so, but the Bible tells us who this landlord is of this vineyard, all right? John chapter 15, 1 and 2 says, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch... In me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. In every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear fruit. Amen? And then skip down to verse 5. I am the vine, and you are the branches. He who abides in me, I in him, bears much fruit, and without me you can do nothing. Who is this landlord? Jesus Christ. Who is this boss? That was hiring all these people. Jesus. Jesus is the one that went to the east side, north side, west, and south side. And said, I want you to come work for me. Amen? Amen. Early in the morning, after lunch, even at the last hour. Amen? Amen. Let's 
He is calling us to work, friends. Jesus is calling you to work for him. Amen? It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter what you've been through. Amen? Here, uh, me and Pastor Carlos, we don't look down at you no matter what you look like. We don't care what race you are. We don't care how you're dressed. Amen? Jesus takes care of that and he helps you out with that. He's the one that cleanses you. I'm just a man. I can't cleanse you more than anything, than anyone. Amen? I'm not here to judge you. The, the ultimate judge is Jesus Christ. Jesus is the boss right here. He's the one in charge of this vineyard. And he's calling you to come work for him. Amen? It's equal opportunity. Amen? Amen? He's calling us to spread the gospel. That's what he's calling us to work. He's calling us to visit the sick. He's calling us to feed those that are hungry. Amen? He's calling us to pray for those. The Bible also says to cry with those that cry. You know? A lot of times we just need to give them a hug and listen to them. Instead of telling them things. I'm good at that. I'm good at telling people what to do. And my wife reminds me sometimes, I just need you to listen to me for, for a bit. <laughs> I just need you to hug me and listen to me. And sometimes it's hard for me to do that. You know, but I can talk. I love to talk. I'll talk for hours. <laughs> But uh, a lot of times we just need to be there for somebody, right? A lot of times we need to be there for people. The Bible also says to make disciples for him. What does it mean to make disciples? We are to teach them what the word of God says. Amen. We are to teach and lead, uh, guide each other to the word of God, what the Bible says. And that's why we're, we're studying what the Bible has for us. Amen. Because this word will transform you. You will be transformed. Amen. I, like I said, I'm not here to change you. God will change you. Amen. It says it's a kingdom business. It's a kingdom business. We work for the Lord. In a minute, we will see what that payment is. We work for the Lord and he's calling all of us to work for him. So if you, if you know how to sing and you ever want to come up here and sing for us to praise God, get with me and we'll get you up here. If you know how to play an instrument, let me know. If you know how to read poetry, it don't always have to be music. If you know how to read poetry, let me know. We'll, we'll get you up here. Amen. God has given every single one of us a talent and a gift. Some of us might have more gifts and talents than others, and some of us may only have one, but we all have at least one gift and one talent. Amen? So God is calling us to work for Him. He loves you very much. He wants us to work on all this together. We will be guided by the Holy Spirit, and the angels will be there right next to us to help us out. Amen? Amen? Now that we know who this landlord is, now that we know who this boss is, Brother Tay, <coughs> we know that it's Jesus Christ. <coughs> Let's go back to Matthew chapter 20. Let's go back to the book of Matthew. And Matthew was one of the disciples. <coughs> Matthew chapter 20. 10 through 12. And we're going to go back to what she was saying. <laughs> Matthew chapter 20, 10 through 12 says, But when the first came, they, they supposed that they would receive more, and they likewise received each denarius. And when they had received it, they complained against the landlord, saying, these last men have worked only one hour 
and you made them equal to us who have born and burdened and on the heat of the day. Amen. So the people that have started working early in the morning, 6 a.m., and then the people that only worked one hour, they all got paid the same. Every single person got paid the same, even though some of them worked less hours. I know some of us at work, we would probably complain about that, right? <laughs> it was like, she only worked two hours and I worked all day. How are you going to pay her the same? What's going on? <laughs> but here, they're talking to Jesus. They're saying, they've only been in the church so long. I've been in the church all my life. How are you going to pay them the same? Because Jesus is not concerned how long you've been doing ministry. God is not concerned if you're a pastor or a deacon or an elder. He's not concerned whether you have a big ministry and or you have you don't have a ministry. He's not concerned about that. All God is concerned about is if you're serving him and you're spreading the gospel. Amen. It's not about titles. It's not about who's better than who. Right? So Jesus pays everybody the same. When we all go to heaven, we're all getting paid the same. It's not about how long you've been in the church. It's about if you're working for Him. It's about if you've given your life to Him. Amen? That's awesome. You know, it might not seem fair, but sometimes we get prideful, right? We get prideful that I'm better than you are or you're better than me. We don't need to do those things because we are to serve the Lord. We are to come to God and He's the one in charge. We are just His servants. Amen? What do you suggest the payment is? What is the payment? Again, I'm going to go to the Word of God because I could tell you. But... The Bible speaks to us, right? Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. That's a few pages forward. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. <coughs> 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 and 25. Do you not know that those who run in a race all run? It's talking about like a marathon race. But one receives the price. Run in such a way that you may obtain it. Saying, stay in the race, right? So you can get that price. And everyone who competes for the price is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown. But we... For an unperishable crown. Amen? That payment is a crown. Not royal crown. <laughs> In Spanish, it's a corona. Not a cor uh, cerveza corona. Right? This crown is the payment that we all receive. When we all make it to heaven. That is the payment that we all shall receive. Amen? A unperishable crown. You know what that crown symbolizes? Eternal life. Eternal life. That is the payment God promises for all of us. That we will live forever in heaven. Amen? What better price? What better payment than that? Right? That's how much God loves you. But that means we have to decide if we want to work for Him, right? We have to make that decision whether we want to stay in the race. We have to make that decision whether we want to stay working for the Lord. Amen? That means us giving our lives to Him. Us giving our heart to Him. Doesn't mean you have to be perfect. Because as long as you're sincere in giving Him your heart, He will help you to change. 
He will transform you. And day by day, you will become a new person. They're going to see a new person in you. God will transform you because He doesn't want to leave you where you're at. He doesn't leave, want to leave you where you're messed up right now. He wants to give you a new life. Amen? And that's why I can stand up here and smile in front of you. I go through things. I go through a lot of things. You might say, well, he probably doesn't go through anything. <laughs> I'll give you a quick story. When me and, uh, me and my sister, we used to live in Mexico. And my dad passed away. So we came here to the United States. And being from Mexico, we didn't know anything. We didn't have no money. We didn't have no food. We were going through the trash cans. We were eating chicken from Popeyes, leftover chicken. I guess I still love chicken. <laughs> uh, we went through a lot of things. Me and my sister, uh, we, were, uh, we were molested. We went through some things. Uh, we were left alone. We were going in the streets. I got into a lot of trouble. I started doing drugs. And then my mom met my stepdad and everything got a little bit better. And um, so I've been through some things, you know, but I've met God. I remember I was, me and this guy, we were walking down on Grand Street, Nelson Street, over there on the east side of town. And we're up to no good. You know, we were just looking, we were looking to go buy a, a bag of weed. You know, we wanted to get high. We used to get high every day. And uh, we were looking to go buy a bag of weed. And uh, this man, we're walking past this fire station. And this man comes, comes out. He goes directly to me. I don't know why he didn't go to my friend, but he comes directly to me. And he just starts telling me about Jesus Christ. He starts telling me how much Jesus Christ loved me. He says, you know that Jesus Christ loves you very much. And he has a plan for you. And I was mad. I was mad at God because I felt God had taken my dad, right? I was mad at God. And at the same time, I wanted to show off for my friend. So guess what I did? I cursed out that fireman. I was showing, I was showing off for my friend, and I started cursing him out. So you don't effing know who I am. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know my life, and why are you judging me? He wasn't even judging me. He was trying to help me out. Amen? And uh, I, was, I cursed him out. I mean, to this day, I feel bad. I cursed him out. I was showing off for my friend. But don't you know that night, that what he had told me, it, he planted a seed in my heart. Amen? And I was like, maybe Jesus does love me. Maybe he does care about me. But I would, I would doubt, I would have questions, well, why am I going through all this? Why did it take my dad away? Why am I on the streets? Why am I eating out of trash cans? Why am I doing all these things, right? But he planted a seed in me, and I would cry at night. Like, sorry, God, I guess you do love me. So I started to look for God. I started to search for God. And I visited, I think, almost every church here in Amarillo. <laughs> I went from Pentecostal to Baptist, Jehovah Witness. Uh, I was raised Catholic. I went to the, eventually I went to the Seventh-day Adventist church. But even God called me out of the Seventh-day Adventist church. You know, but I did find God. I did find God, or actually He found me, amen? He found me. And I just responded. I responded. It was years. Don't think that from one day to the next, I was this perfect saint, because I wasn't. I would go to church high. I would go to church with a hungover, hangover. Um, my sister back here in the yellow, I'm going to put her on the spot. <laughs> She'll tell you, I used to, uh, I used to be a, 
I used to practice witchcraft. I used to practice witchcraft. My room was all in black. I used to have long, long hair, which nothing wrong with having long hair, but it's just the way that I did it. I was into this demonic things, and I was I had all these demons and posters on my walls, and we, uh, me and a friend of mine, his name was Adrian, we used to uh, practice witchcraft. No, Raymond, I'm sorry, his name was Raymond. We used to practice witchcraft. And uh, I started to see visions. I started to see demonic visions. And it, it started to scare me. We used to put pentagrams right here. I used to wear eyeliner, all dressed in black, listen to death metal. I mean, I can tell you all the names of the uh, death metal. It used to be called obituary. It used to be called uh, Slayer. All those death metal bands, and then heavy metal bands as well. I got scared, but I remembered what that fireman had told me. And I responded to God. I responded to God and I said, okay, Lord, use me, but deliver me from these demonic forces. Amen. I don't want, because I would walk around in plain daylight and I would close my eyes and I would see all these demons around me. It was scary. There's nothing to joke about. Witchcraft is nothing to joke about. It's a serious thing. The devil don't play. The devil wants to destroy you. Amen? The devil wants to destroy you and you do not want to miss anything that has to do with witchcraft. But God delivered me from that. And I knew God had a plan for me. So yes, I'm thankful that God has blessed me with, with my wife and my children. God is awesome. God will restore you. Amen. This payment is the crown. Eternal life. That's what God wants to give you, eternal life. Amen. The devil wants to destroy your life and eventually take you to hell. We don't want to go to there, right? We're already living through hell in this earth. We go through so many things. So why would we want to ultimately end up there, right? We don't want to. We make it harder than it is sometimes. But serving the Lord doesn't have to be that hard. Just be obedient to what He asks you to do. He will change you. He will give you the strength. Right? You know, uh, a, lot of, a lot of churches, a lot of pastors give you all these rules and regulations. You know, the only rules, God left us ten simple rules, and that's the Ten Commandments. But only in Him we're able to keep His law. Only in Jesus Christ we're able to keep His Ten Commandments. If we try to do it in our own strength, we'll never make it. God is awesome. Matthew chapter 20, 13 and 16. Matthew chapter 20. Matthew 20, 13 through 16 says, But he answered one to one of them and said, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me? For a denarius, take what is yours and go your way. I wish to give to the last man in the same as to you. It is not lawful for me to do what I wish with my own things, or is it your evil eye because I am good? For the last will be first and the first will be last. For many are called, but a few chosen. Amen? Jesus said, I'm giving everybody the same payment. Maybe it's because you're evil that you're jealous of your brother. Jealousy is evil. Amen? Envious is evil. So some of these people that were complaining, why are you paying them the same thing as me? It's maybe because they were having evil thoughts. Thinking I'm better than that person. We're not better than anybody. Work yes. So they agreed and then they forgot they agreed and then they complained. Yes. Okay. 
they all had agreed. The landlord told them I'm paying all of the same. So they all agreed to that. But as time went by, they, 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 they begin to have evil thoughts and say, I deserve, I deserve more, right? So we shouldn't be envious, we shouldn't be jealous, and whatever, as long as you know that they're working for the Lord, praise God, amen? We are to encourage each other to keep serving the Lord. If we see another ministry out there uh, helping people out, encourage them. Don't put them down. We are not here to compete with each other, amen? We're here to encourage each other to keep sharing the gospel. God is amazing. My last Bible verse. Matthew 9, 37. Matthew 9, 37. And this is the ultimate call that Jesus is telling us. Matthew 9, 37. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few, right? There's plenty of work to do out here, guys. There's plenty of work for us to do to share the gospel. It says there's plenty of work, but very few that are willing to do his work. Amen? All it takes, like I said, if you don't know how to read your Bible very well, Write down a couple of Bible verses and share it with somebody. Give somebody a hug. Pray with them. Tell them that we're in this together. Amen? That is doing God's work. Helping each other out. And that's what God is saying for us to do is to be workers for Jesus Christ. There's plenty of work out here for us to do. God is calling us in this world as we're coming into the last days. There are so many things changing in politics, in the government, and around the world. There are so many things that are happening in the name of Christ that have nothing to do with Christ. A lot of people are just in it for the money, right? And that's not what we're here for. I'm here to teach you what God says in the, in the Bible. And we're here to, I'm here to lead you to Jesus Christ. He's the one that will transform you. He's the one that's going to help you in these last days. There's some crazy things that are going to be happening in these last days. And we want to be prepared. But we want to be prepared spiritually. It's not about how many guns you can get or how much you can defend yourself. The Bible says that this is your weapon. The Bible says that the Bible is your sword. And this is how we fight the enemy, right? So we need to be grounded more in the Bible. I'm not here to just entertain you. I could stand up here and preach and yell and get you motivated and jump up and down and run up and down these hallways. But no, I'm here to show you what the Word of God says. Amen? And that's what we're here to do. If you have not accepted Jesus Christ into your heart and you would like to, if you would like to uh, work for Him, if you would want to be part of his vineyard, I would just simply ask you to raise your hand. Amen. God's going to work in you. God is going to make a miracle in your life. He's going to transform you. All you have to do is believe it. Because he already said it. He's our father, right? We are his children. When you tell your children you promise them something and you come through, you see the joy in them, right? God has a lot of promises for us. All we have to do is accept it and believe it. Amen? God will deliver you. God will restore you. And God will give you joy. At this time, I would like to call anybody that would like prayer to come up here. And we will pray together. If you would like to have prayer, we're going to invite you to come up here and we're going to pray for you. Pastor Carlos, would you come to, like to come help me and as uh, we pray for everybody? Uh, 
Pastor Carlos, if you could uh, anoint everyone with oil as we pray. Anybody else want to come up here for prayer, you may do so. All right. Let us bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we come before you as your children, as your servants. Lord, you know that whatever person's going whatever they're going through today, you know each person's heart. You know whether they've been going through hunger or just financial problems or family they don't have family or they've lost somebody. You know that if uh, somebody's hurt them, somebody's been ugly to them, you know the marriages that are struggling, whatever it is, Lord, you know each person's heart. And Lord, we just ask that you come into our hearts and help us to surrender all to you because you're the only one that can help us, Lord. And we want to work for you, Lord. We want to be part of your family. And Lord, at this time, we just ask that the Holy Spirit come in each person right now. And that this oil that was applied in each person is symbolic of your Holy Spirit. We ask for healing. Many people that are going through sickness and different things that they're facing, Lord. But you are our master healer. You are our physician. Father, so we pray for healing in the mighty name of Jesus. And we know that you're able to heal people from head to toe. And we believe that because you tell us that by your stripes we are healed. We claim that right now, Father. And we ask you humbly, in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Y'all may be seated. God is so good, amen. Here in a minute, here in a minute we're gonna be doing a, a meal and we're also gonna have clothing downstairs for anybody that needs clothing. But God is awesome. We invite y'all to come uh, next Saturday at 11 a.m. 